and a very good afternoon to all of you and welcome to a sneak peek as to what is happening right here and right now in the middle of the African bush. Starting off with some very small versions of one of Africa's most iconic cats. And for those of you that have been watching some of these 10 minute live safaris on Facebook, you will have seen these cubs before and perhaps are even marveling at just how big they've got. But before we go into the cubs too much as they start to play, I just need to introduce myself and tell you a little bit about where you are and what you're seeing. So my name is Janie and the man responsible for bringing you these amazing images is Rion. And we are coming to you live from a place called Juma Private Game Reserve, which is in the world famous Greater Kruger National Park area of South Africa. And we get to go out each and every day, twice a day, and watch moments just like this one. So let's have a look at these little playful cubs. They have been so full of energy and spirit this afternoon, which is wonderful to see. It's quite a cool and cloudy afternoon out here in South Africa. And the cubs are taking a full advantage of the drop in temperature to help practice all sorts of exciting skills, like, for example, stalking and pouncing and more pouncing and <laughs> just generally tackling each other. Now we've been lucky enough on our live safaris to actually watch these cubs grow up. Now now, oops, <laughs> you've got to watch where you're going if you're going to run backwards. You might trip over a lion. <laughs> oh, now at nearly six months old, our little cubs have forever formed a place or found a place in all of our hearts as they've grown up from tiny cuddly little teddy bears to relatively large quite powerful little predators not that large though they've still got a little way to go full of mischief you can see it in their brown eyes now, don't forget for those of you that perhaps are new to this live safari experience we do have a TV show in the States for two hours on il at 11 p.m. Eastern Time on Nat Geo Wild, and that will be a two-hour live safari that you can jump onto the back at any time. You can send us through questions at any time that you want to. Perhaps there's something you've always wanted to know about the lions, and because it is completely live, we can't plan what's going to happen. You could see elephants, you could see lions, you could see leopards, you could see buffalo. There is a whole manner of different things, or all manner of different things that you could see. So please do join us 11 p.m. Eastern Time on Nat Geo Wild to go on a raw, unedited, 100% live safari with us. And hopefully the Inkahumas, for this is the pride that we are with, the Inkahuma, or the Brown Ivory Pride, which is a type of tree, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, will be around and perhaps even catch something for their dinner some point over the next few days they haven't eaten in a couple of days so they are starting to get a little bit hungry and with six growing mouths to feed for although we've only been looking at three of them there are six cubs as part of this pride and the lionesses are going to be under pressure bless you i know the feeling little one um the lionesses are going to be under pressure in order to find them something to eat but you'll get to join us on our live safaris and follow these cubs as they grow older. Now, Jackie, you want to know what is wrong with their elbows. And that's something that you'll see on all of our precious Inkahuma cubs. You want to know if they've been rubbing them. The answer is no. Those patchy bits of skin is caused by mange. So we've had a, we've just come out of a really terrible drought here in South Africa. And typically what happens as a naturally occurring disease is that mange starts to spread. Now because these are completely 100% lions, they are left in South Africa at least, and in this particular part of the Kruger National Park. Um, unfortunately we cannot play as Brent would term it, nature's gardeners. We have to let it play out. Unfortunately eight little cubs, not belonging to this pride, but belonging to another pride, actually died as a result of the mange that they had contracted. However, it seems as though the Inkahuma pride, hey, look at you go. <laughs> Amazing tree climbing skills. Uh-oh, uh-oh, but not more than you can chew there. And you're about to get pounced on. Oh, flop. Now, the good news is that the mange appears to be healing. 
on the Inkuhuma cubs. So they will recover. And what that means is that future generations of this pride will have a degree of genetic resistance to the mange. Because they obviously, the, the Inkuhuma cubs obviously have a slight genetic advantage over the Styx cubs in that they have managed to fight it off and survive. It also helps that the rains have now fallen. You can see there is a green flush to the grasses. And that in turn will also help to treat the mange that they've contracted. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is why the little lion cubs have bald elbows. They are recovering though. It's looking much, much better. Also, fierce look at your teeth. It was, however, very hard for us, us to watch. And I'm very glad that they're doing better. And Abdallah, you want to know where are the elders that you are only seeing the small ones? Ah, oh, take down again. And the reason behind that is the elders are not too far away. They're a couple of meters away, but they're in some very, very dense vegetation and they're completely fast asleep. So I just thought that perhaps you would like to see some playful lion cubs this afternoon. Since I do only have a short time to spend with you, I thought we might keep ourselves entertained by these three rambunctious cubs. But the females are not too far away, keeping a close eye on their unruly offspring, making sure that they don't get up to too much mischief <coughs> as they rough and tumble their way through the afternoon. Ouch, that bite looked sore. Sometimes it does get a little bit much, and sometimes they do get a bit cross with each other. But they have been so playful. Wow, back up the tree. You're not very good at this little lion cub. Not nearly as good as the leopard that you could see if you join us on wildsafarilive.com. You can join us there to see James with a leopard and to see more of these cub games. <laughs> this cub has been having such a wonderful time with its tree climbing, but it's not going very well. <laughs> How cute is that? <laughs> Now, Michael, you wanted to know if we would ever step in to treat the lions if they happen to be in a situation as they have been. The answer is it depends. Um, out here in South Africa, our lions are, the, the population of lions is very, very healthy. We're also in a massive open system, which is 8.5 million acres in size. And what we've learned over the many years of conservation in this area is that leaving nature to take its course is the best option. Um, there's so much that we don't fully grasp and understand, and there's a very, very delicate balance out here. So by helping the lions, we could end up tilting the balance of the population, which would in turn damage populations of things like leopards or cheetahs, for example, and other predators, and especially the endangered wild dog or painted dog. So no, we don't intervene when it is a natural disease. We do intervene if it is a man-made problem. So if, for example, we were to find a lion with a snare, or perhaps caught up in some litter, which doesn't happen here. We're in a wonderful conservation area. But if we were to find something like that, then absolutely, yes, we would intervene. But only in a situation where the injury or the, the problem with the lion is man-made rather than natural. And that is hard to watch and sometimes hard to stomach, but it is the way in which things work out here. And nature knows, ultimately, nature knows best as to how to go about managing the population and the delicate, delicate balance out here. Now, we are rapidly running out of time to spend with you on this live safari. So you'll have to join us on wildsafarilive.com. And, of course, don't forget about the TV show on Sunday at 11 p.m. Eastern Time on Nat Geo Wild, only in the States, unfortunately. But you will be able to see more of these amazing moments. You can see them on wildsafarilive.com. You could see James with leopards. I'm going to stay with these lions because they are being so thoroughly entertaining. So I hope to see you on the back of our safari vehicle view soon, um, sending through your questions and any other comments that you'd like to make. We are open to them. So please do join us. In the meantime, let's finish off by looking at these gorgeous little lion cubs in front of us. They are being so very sweet. Oh, don't vanish. <laughs> One more sneaky pounce for us. Oh, little sleepy lion cubs have used up their balls of energy. Oh, no, they haven't. There they go, scampering about, and that's the joy of our live safaris. So join us then. Unfortunately for now, it is time to say farewell. Bye-bye, everybody.